Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to the space of our group that we hold in for years with intention to bring our focus meditation for the common good. Today is the fifth day of the solar festival in Virgo, and it's the day, last day of distribution. And so today we gather to reflect together and meditate, invoking the vision of the unfolding plan on the topic for our Virgo Libra cycle, the will to good, creating balance through right action. In this cycle, Jillian will lead us through our meditation. But uh, as we prepare to uh, enter in our meditative space, I invite us to bring our focus to the uh, purpose of our work, as it is stated in our statement of purpose. Birgit, would you please give a voice to the purpose statement? Yes, I will. And hello, everyone. Our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good, freedom, and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and cherish diversity of perspectives in our group, creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an asramic outpost, building a group bridge of Buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity we envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the coming one. And over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Birgitta. Thank you everyone for being here today. Um, as we usually do in this, uh, in the full moon meditations, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the, and refresh our memories of the seed thoughts that we received uh, during the first quarter moon meeting that we had in this cycle of um, Libra. But of course, we are still dealing with the energies of Virgo as they're waning out. Um, so I will begin. The first seed thought was goodwill. The second seed thought, let purpose guide all human wills. The third seed thought, right leadership manifests the will to good. The fourth seed thought, sacrifice and resurrection. The fifth seed thought, Grace is manifested when living as a soul. The sixth seed thought. Bringing the divine will to right action. The seventh seed thought, 
Let the energy of will flowing through the group centers support our group action and service. And our final seed thought. Recognition and transmutation of glamour allows for higher energies to emerge. And from these seed thoughts, uh, we create our topic for the cycle of Libra, which is the will to good, creating balance through right action. And with these seed thoughts and our topic, I'm going to hand it over to Jillian, who has graciously offered to focalize our full moon meditation and our cycle of Libra this month. Uh, so over to you, Jillian. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Hello, everyone. Lovely to be with you all again. And as we join together as a group of souls, let us sense the warmth of our hearts as we bring our hearts and minds into action. We hold our chalice made of golden energies of threads of light, love and will to good above us to collect our higher thoughts, impressions and energies which will be distributed later at the time of the new moon. Let's begin by aligning with our soul and from here with the group soul. Now we enter our group heart and the heart of our chalice. Align from here with the hierarchy and all the unseen beings and souls who aid our invocation and evocative efforts, invocative and evocative efforts on behalf of humanity. We lead our minds and group mind into quiet receptivity to hierarchical energies, ideas and impressions that are especially available to us during this full moon tide. We remain in the last of the strong Virgo energies as they fade out to make way for the increasing energies of Libra. We go gently from the energies of the love of the mother of the world in Virgo into the effort of stabilizing the oscillations between soul and personality in the energies of Libra. From Virgo, a second ray sign, I am the mother and the child. I God, I matter am. Which carries the principle of love wisdom more powerfully than any other sign. Uh, I took that from 
esoteric astrologer Philip Lindsay. In soul-centered astrology, it says of Virgo, quote, it is in Virgo that those processes of externalization of the soul onto the physical plane are undertaken. In this respect, Virgo is seen as the sign of the hidden Christ, as it represents the inner gestation and growth of the soul force within each of us. This is the sign of pregnancy and is, it is ruled by the moon, symbolizing the mother of all forms. Speaking of the coming of the new age, it says in Esoteric Astrology, page 486, Quote, the influence of Virgo appears in religions, spiritual and mental organizations and movements which indicate so directly the awakening of the Christ consciousness in humanity. Unquote. It goes on to say that this is one of the factors producing world changes and giving a tremendous push onward to human unfoldment. This is perhaps why we can find hope in all the horrors we are witnessing today. They certainly have the potential for bringing change. People may now decide they have seen enough of cruelty and suffering and will, and will to bring in a different, more cooperative, kindly way of life. In this atmosphere, let us now connect with our topic for this month. The will to good, creating balance through right action. I'll repeat that. The will to good creating balance through right action. As we deepen our contemplation on this topic, let us ponder the following questions. Question one. Have there been noticeable signs of Virgo? I am the mother and the child, 
I God I matter am, taking effect as will to good and creating balance through right action, moving our planet nearer the status of sacredness. I'll repeat that. Question one. Have there been noticeable signs of Virgo? I am the mother and the child. I God, I matter am. Taking effect as will to good and creating balance through right action. Moving our planet nearer the status of sacredness. Question two, as there are so many groups and organizations dedicated to creating the will to good, what is or are hindering progress? Question two, as there are so many groups and organizations dedicated to creating the will to good, what is or are hindering the progress?
Question three. Are there signs that the wars and pestilence in the world today are leading towards equilibrium? Question three. Are there signs that the wars and pestilence in the world today are leading towards equilibrium? I'll just leave a few more minutes so that anyone who needs to and wants to can give the questions a bit more thought.
It is time now to return from the depths of our pondering. As we draw together the impressions from our contemplation, let us allow them to take form. They may come to us as words, pictures, symbols, sound, or even colours. Let's draw our impressions together and let them flow into the group heart, filling our chalice and vitalizing it with radiant light, enhancing its beauty and the wisdom of its tone. Together, we direct this light upward to the hierarchy and await their blessings upon it. And now, realising our invocation today, we witness its radiance pouring downward from our chalice into the lower planes, stimulating all receptive hearts and minds. Grounding our work today and the energies we have invoked let us sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, everyone.
Let us hold just a few more moments in silence so we can write down our impressions before we open our sharing time. Also, just a reminder that the, our Community Impressions Board is now available on the 2025initiative.org website. And you are all welcome to continue sharing impressions you receive across the next two weeks as we prepare for the evocation at the time of the new moon. So just another moment or two of silence. Oh, also Alexander put the community impressions board in our chat box here too. Thank you.
This is Kathy in, in Hawaii. And I thank you for this powerful, very strong, clear focus on the potentialities of this time. My response to questions two and three then lead to an answer of sorts for question one. It is my view that the hindering progress is the vast imprint and saturation of so many personalities with abuse trauma that has not been addressed and that is being now uh, revealed in the in exposure healing on vast uh, on a vast level is is occurring through the, the appearance of the various narcissistic leadership uh, influences in the world, which allows those who are similarly traumatized and have a similar worldview to become verbal and visible in their woundedness in response to these narcissistic leaders. And exposure is the first step really for healing. So as a shamanic healer, I'm encouraged by this at the same time as I'm appalled and sometimes overwhelmed by the horrors that are also exposed with this energy and this pathology. I believe that the, the second area, the, the question three, all of the wars, the pestilence, the, you know, the weather catastrophes that are occurring are impacting the collective consciousness of humanity, which has been so focused on entitlement and conquest and ownership and not on collaboration and, and, uh, and kindness, which I believe the new age will bring. So these, these, these events at this vast level are actually honing, you know, impacting and honing the collective consciousness and shocking it to the point that will allow a shift into something that could become, you know, gratitude and service and collaboration as a um, as a kind of surrender or submission of uh, of ego uh, into something that is potentially more correct, and so then that could lead to moving our planet nearer to the status of sacredness by the behavior of the human kingdom towards the other kingdoms. Thank you. Uh, this is Judy. Um, I'd like to address uh, the questions, specifically one, but it probably will lead into the others. In terms of notable signs in Virgo taking effect uh, in with uh, the will to good and creating balance. Uh, tomorrow starts the first day of the United Nations Summit of the Future. And if anyone has been following this, it is uh, an exceptional uh, undertaking at this extraordinary time. It starts uh, here in Virgo and it um, continues for the next uh, three to four days, basically moving from Virgo into Libra and spanning the, uh, the equinox. 
And so just thinking of those energies alone uh, is, is quite uh, an undertaking of uh, the energies that are being poured into this conference. Uh, we have stood together as a world serving group uh, with many other groups. And this is something where world goodwill and the uh, counts, uh, the cycle of conferences is really focusing energies. Um, if people have a, an understanding of the background of the United Nations, it came about almost 80 years ago in uh, 1945 uh, on a shambolic uh, impulse uh, and basically uh, was brought to life at the same time as the Great Invocation. Uh, at that time, there were 50 countries. Right now, there are 200 countries or nearly that that are part of the United Nations. The world has dramatically changed. And this is a time when uh, people are getting together and, and not just now, but there has been preparations for this future UN uh, for the last two to three years to really take a hard look at uh, where we're going and to basically begin some future planning. Uh, there's three big initiatives. One is called the Pact for the Future, and it's actually looking at um, the United Nations as a system and is the system that was developed uh, 80 years ago, the system that best serves us now. Um, so actually looking at the UN as a system in general, um, looking to uh, come up with uh, another pact on global digital compact. So bringing those countries uh, that do not have uh, good digital and internet service into uh, the world with us so that uh, we don't have countries that are left behind. There's a focus on uh, future generations. There's an understanding now that uh, it's no longer us and them, but it really is we. If we are going to move together um, as, as a humanity, we have to uh, break down those barriers. So there's real understandings in that. And this is um, a time when um, governments and groups of all kinds, civil society and governments are getting together to uh, look at uh, the issues uh, in a collaborative way. Uh, although the Charter of the UN starts with we the people, it really has been mostly governments that have uh, been uh, the focus when it comes to making change. However, now there's something called a coalition for a citizens assembly, looking to bring uh, we the people more into the narrative and into the decision-making. So there's, there's great changes ahead. If you get the World's uh, Goodwill newsletter, their, their headline is planning for a transformative future. Um, so certainly the group that I work with, uh, which is the UN and the SDGs, are holding this conference in high, um, high thought and, and bringing through the energies along with many of our other um, co-workers, um, because I think there is a move afoot um, to really look at where we are going. And there's a lot of agreement that has taken place on the, the back channels in terms of uh, not hearing these issues for the first time, but the people that will be part of this conference uh, are there to do the work and uh, create balance. Uh, as we move into Libra and understand that, in fact, uh, we need to think more about the sacredness. Um, when I look at the second questions in terms of what is hindering progress, uh, my question is, uh, what about progress on the subjective levels? Because I don't think it's being hindered at all. Uh, when we think of how we have gathered together and um, energetically understand our oneness and our potential to work with hierarchy in a new way, um, there's a lot of progress that is being made on the subjective levels. And so while uh, out of manifestation still um, presents a chaotic view, I think when you look critically at things, uh, there is change afoot 
there's certainly balance afoot. And um, I'm, you know, very uh, optimistic that uh, the unfolding uh, that needs to happen in terms of our evolution is really beginning to take hold. Thank you. If I may. Uh, Katja Kaufman. I just want to thank you, Joe, for all this really amazing questions. They're very deep and they're reminding me about the only thought I could share that came through clearly that our consciousness grows when we act. Knowledge by itself does not bring, in my understanding, does not bring the expansion of consciousness. Um, and that's how finally the thought that is aspirant knows because they work, he works, he works, they work. You know, finally hit the hit their full circle because just knowledge does not bring does not tra transfer a shift into consciousness action makes this feedback from the matter in the check of reality reality check which we desperately need because for a while we are dwelling on our knowledge as something sacred, which it was. Same like balance is something sacred, which it was. But now we are required to put those things in dynamic processes in order to come to the point of oneness, true oneness, which is monadic level, monadic consciousness. which in reality, there is no consciousness only being, action or being, state of action and state of being. So thank you very much again for all that. And uh, it's hard to formulate because as soon as we start talk, we hit the mental plane and the mind gets active. And uh, it is really, precious to me to be in the group field and be receptive. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the questions. Um, I agree with you, uh, uh, Kathy, about um, um, this. Um, um, all these problems, uh, emotional problems, in in the Me Too uh, campaign and uh, the Corona uh, situation has uh, create more attention to um, to the emotions and we need to 
shift the focus from um, uh, from being a, an a emotional uh, oriented uh, a, um, opinion uh, to more mental oriented and we uh, getting the, the the problems in the open uh, is um, letting uh, some of the hidden problems um, open to the to 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 healing and to to uh, mentally addressing that it is not okay and um um but what we also need is to get the mental um connected with the higher mental um the buddhic plane uh, to the wisdom um and there, thereby to to uh, uh, the soul and um creating um a better connection with the uh, the 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 soul and and um uh, the, the the wisdom uh, which can uh, be addressed to uh, get some um wise actions to uh, to uh, solve the, the problems i think when you just see the news it is really chaotic and um a lot of emotions are going on um but um I hope we can get more uh, people uh, to shift the uh, the focusing uh, over to the uh, mental um, uh, and higher mental plane, and um, and thereby uh, solving some of the problems. I think to the um second question uh, the hindering process uh, the hindering process is um when you're stuck in the emotional um focusing uh, you need to get up to we need to get up to the mental plane and the, the higher mental plane um and um the tip tibetans uh, writes many places that uh, um in in the near future we get we will get an a mental opinion how do you say that uh, a, a, a opinion uh, a, uh, the 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 uh, people's voice uh, will get more mental oriented um as before it was more emotional um i i hope we are nearing that place but i don't see we are getting to the balance uh to the libra point uh yet thank you
Hello, everyone. Um, it's Lynn. Um, and thinking about all of this, um, I think I was uh, just struck by the sort of uh, maybe the more obvious that the, the struggle between personality and soul that seems to be just manifesting, certainly here in the U.S. and, um, and other places I get news around the world, um, it seems um, there are such, there are definite strong realized personalities and um, trying to influence, you know, take and grab power, um, influence those around them. And then there are those who are, whether consciously or not, are um, attempting to use the higher soul energies and uh, that seems, to be, of course, that's the major struggle, isn't it? And, and um, the, uh, we, we see it um, even obviously in our politics here, it seems to be made more and more obvious by the extremes that are, are emerging. Um, the, the difference between past and future, um, even in the in the words used, uh, one side uses words like future, joy, light, plan, um, everyone welcome, and the other side seems to uh, say this person's evil, that person's evil, that person's dark, that person is wrong. Uh, I hate that person. I mean, it's gotten that obvious. Um, when you listen to the words of the people that are running for office at, for the presidency. And um, I mean, it just becomes, uh, the, this, the difference becomes more and more extreme. Um, and then uh, I think of, of how I see it out in, you know, expressing itself is, uh, Oh, there are a couple examples I thought of. Um, one is the, um, that's encouraging, is the worldwide horror of people when Ukraine was attacked. I think there was just a unanimous sense of horror. And um, I'm sure there are a lot of subtleties in this that many of us don't realize. We, we aren't from that area. But there, I think that universal reaction of solving problems through war was just kind of overwhelming. Um, and then also just a, a small thing, an example, um, there was a made for TV movie on, it was a Western, um, it was on at some point here, I don't remember the name of it, um, maybe a couple of years ago. And um, instead of just having bad guys and good guys and the good guys win, um, they actually, uh, it was actually sort of a range war between a large cattleman, cattleman and, and a, uh, some people in a town that didn't want to be bullied. And uh, there was a lot of violence, of course. But at the end of it, uh, the fellow who was sort of the hero turned to the fellow who had uh, been grabbing for more and more and just said, why did you do all of this? Just for more cows? It was just sort of a line that stuck in my head, and it was sort of left at that point. But to say that out loud, um, I think, was this, one of those little signs that the world is changing. Um, I am so uh, inspired, um, Judy, by all of the things you said about the UN and would really like to look into what maybe uh, learning more about some of that. It, truly inspiring. Um, thank you, everybody.
Hello, it's Kiki here. Hearing some of these stories, I I had read something, a couple of stories this last week. Sadly, I can't remember the second one, but it was, the first was sort of relating perhaps to question number one, have there been notable signs of goodwill, et cetera? Well, this was a story about a man I think it was in the United States. It was in an English paper, but, and he had a company and one afternoon he was coming in and he saw a worker, a single father arriving at work for his shift. And he had his little daughter of four-ish years old and she had a little knapsack and her little teddy and he was taking her to a sort of daycare or to a friend's to sleep over. And the owner of the company was sort of touched by this and taken aback. And he sought the man out and asked him about his family life and what he did for childcare. And, and it turns out that he took his daughter sort of every other night, they went to another friend's house where she could sleep and be looked after, what have you. And the owner of the company was really touched and upset by this. So he opened a daycare, a child care center at his business. Though the workers could bring their children and didn't have to farm them out. He was trying to get other businesses in the area to join in to help financially. And he couldn't find any other companies that wanted to join him. And financially, in the end, he couldn't support it all. So he closed the little center, but he gave all the employees with this, with the children, $400 a month to help with child care. And I thought that was a rather uplifting story. He really was trying, a good soul. And the father of the little girl was then able to find a proper daycare for her and it even worked out better for him. The other story was, sadly, I can't remember, it was about a woman, a very, very poor woman in Africa who was doing something in her village to help the other mothers who were as poor or poorer than she was. And it, it was just another very heartwarming story that hearts are being cracked open and wanting to help others. And I think that's a very high level of attention and love, it seems. Um, oh, there was something else I can't think now, but thank you so much. And thank you, Julian, for the questions. And again, uh, also I, Judy, am very, impressed and taken by everything that the UN gives. I think that it's one of the hopes for the world um, going into the future. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your comments. And um, just I'll just give my thoughts on the answers that I would have thought. But I think what the one thing that answers all the questions is um, we just need the soul leading people. Um, and because the media and governments are stoking up the emotional um plain as hard as they can and people are reacting to it and everything is escalating and i think if uh, people could be more soul conscious as we are working for then everything could be quietened down and uh, perhaps people would be led to uh, see that they're going in the wrong direction so I think that was all that I had. I think that just sort of um, answers all the questions. Um, and yes, I agree that uh, the UN is our hope for the future and that it 
just needs a lot more support than it gets. Thanks. One thing I meant to add that I forgot um, is that um, I think, like like you said, Joe, the, the news media uh, picks out so much of the sensational um, in, in, um, and feels its job for good reason is to let us know about big events at all but um, and positions people take. But I think what gets missed is the goodness of so many everyday people. Um, when they have a chance, when they're not suffering um, from, la from hunger or this or that, and maybe even then, but the, just the basic goodness of so many people um, is uh, not seen by the, necessarily by the world. Yet, if you look around you and people at people you know or people in your community, um, our newspaper has stories all the time of people, of everyday people, even high school kids that have done, started outstanding programs uh, that help other people. And they've gotten an idea and followed through on it. And people who have just given of their time and energy in some way that helps other people, it's, it's pretty prevalent, really. All righty, thanks. As we reflected on question number three, um, at our meditation, an image of uh, uh, visualization that you probably saw, a uh, visualization that shows the movement of our sun throughout the galaxy. And uh, therefore, as the sun moves through the galaxy, the movement of the planets are not... Uh, uh, circular they're actually uh, spiral and so uh, all the planets in our solar systems spiral around the sun the sun moves throughout the galaxy and so that <clears throat> uh, image was in a way a response to uh, this uh, question and this uh, notion of equilibrium what is actually equilibrium There is, in, in my sense, there is no such thing as static equilibrium, this, as this uh, uh, circular movement of the planets uh, around the sun. Instead of that, there is a dynamic equilibrium. As we move uh, as uh, with our planet around the sun in this spiral movement, we uh, there is always change in uh, equilibrium, change in balance as we move through the space together with sun. And so I don't think we should expect the equilibrium to manifest itself as this uh, tranquil, peaceful state of being. And Decay many times uh, said that there is no peace as a uh, just a, a space where nothing happens. It's peace. Uh, the uh, the uh, he said the opposite of war is not peace, but uh, rather development. So in that sense, peace or equilibrium 
it's the, it's development it's the constant change and so we clearly recognize that as humanity we are undergoing now one of the most dramatic changes or developments or leaps in our evolution uh, at the moment and so therefore uh something that cannot come out of our knowledge but it's more maybe somewhat it's a Piscean quality the quality of trust but I think it's not quite Piscean it's actually the uh, trust is a Aquarian equivalent of believe so instead of believing we have to trust that there is a plan and that the forces of light are uh, winning and that the uh, guides of the race bringing us together as a humanity into destined future as much as chaotic this time is for us and as hard as it is for us to process and see the high divine providence behind everything that is happening. But I think it's important for us to hold that in a trust based on our recognition that there is a plan and there is the purpose. And another thought that's um, in relation to the second question is my sense that say, many groups and organizations working in the field uh, of human needs, serving humanity, they still mostly working with the concept of goodwill, relying on goodwill of governments relying on goodwill of people relying on goodness of, of humanity and my sense that at this time of need goodwill is not enough and that's the will to good is what is actually missing and in a way um, it's we can say that it might be we can see it as uh, our fault our as esoteric groups trained esotericists uh, whose role is to meditate the precipitation of the will to good will to love will different aspects of the will energy into manifestation then that energy of life which in essence is the energy coming from Shambhala and therefore it's the energy of will will stimulate the action of all those front frontline servers around the world and then their activity will be motivated by the will to good and not just good will This is Anette. I, I agree. Um, you could say that uh, goodwill is uh, uh, the personality energy and will to good is the soul uh, 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 energy. Um, another thing I have uh, thought about is um, I read in the secret doctrine that um, Every every eleventh year, there are uh, sunspots uh, in the sun. Uh, we have uh, had 
uh, many here uh, recently, and uh, every eleventh year, they are creating creating um, change, um, like a it is like a heartbeat, and it is creating uh, a, a change on the uh, earth. And another thing is. Um, um, every time there is a, a, a new um, root race or a, um, um, a minor uh, sub sub race uh, sub uh, ray sub uh, uh, what is it? Um, a minor sub uh, ray. Um, ah, these words. Um, a ray, yeah. Yes. Uh, that, then, then there, uh, 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 then there comes a, a, a climate change. Um, and we we get another um uh, continent. Um, but uh, in in the secret doctrine, it says that we have sixteen thousand years till that that happens uh, next uh, time. So, what we see now in climate change, it could be the, the first um, um, uh, in the secret doctrines. It says that. Um, the six sub ray sub uh, uh, sub uh, sub race sub not the race but the the we we are the the fifth uh, root race of uh, people now and the six is on the way. Uh, but only as a minor um, um, sub, yeah, uh, and and this start could uh, perhaps uh, have uh, caused this uh, climate change that we see now. Just a thought. Thank you. Some of the ideas that have been expressed here uh, makes me think a little bit more about uh, something that I have uh, came across in, in my astrology class uh, with Francis Donald. Uh, when we look at evolution, and this is something that Lynn said too, the, the media uh, is pushing still toward mass consciousness. We put out all of these ideas thinking that people will follow blindly. And we are moving uh, huma humanity from mass consciousness into more individualization. So that, that spiral is moving up. And individualization is messy, but we have to start looking at thinking for ourselves. And as people awaken, there is that uh, movement toward uh, not just moving with the masses, but starting to think for oneself. So we see that, um, you know, in many ways, in uh, the protests that are there, in people wanting more of a say-so, in challenging some of the things that are written in the media, challenging uh, these uh, falsehoods and bringing truth out. And so uh, that move away from mass consciousness to individualization is uh, certainly happening. Um, in thinking about this summit for the future, the, the one uh, point that was really brought out, especially through the, the goodwill le letters, is that this has really been a time when you have human creativity and intelligence coming together, those um, 
it, within our, our human family that have that ability to really stop and think and future plan and problem solve. And that hasn't happened before. And when Alexander talked about the idea of moving from goodwill to uh, the will to good, I think we all uh, are anticipating another shambolic impulse with 2025. And we are readying uh, ourselves as a serving group to stand in greater unity so that we can actually uh, be a, a conduit for that force that's coming. So all of these things do show a spiral, spiralic force uh, that's moving us upward. And, and I agree uh, to, a, to a new equilibrium that will never uh, be static, but be dynamic. Thank you. Are there any other impressions to share before we close our meeting today? Probably clarification. When I spoke about static balance, I spoke about the point that Tibetan says we reached during the third root race, sub root race, <laughs> Lemurian. He said that we reached that point of static balance and after that, this is not the goal anymore. Dynamic balance is the goal. And um, yeah, that, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Hello, everybody. What a beautiful um, process of uh, not only process, but an, an intention to place a new thought form to be streamed into humanity. And in regards to the summit of the future at the UN, um, Alice Bailey, the, Tibet, the Tibetan said that as these conferences of helping to guide humanity expanded in the future, and we've reached that future now, we're living that, there were hints that were given to um, the disciples, esoterists, esoteris, occultists, aspirants at that time that encouraged us to um, use uh, and invoke the intuition and deepen our understanding of the shifting stream of direction in human affairs. And the hint reads, um, for the second hint that uh, uh, the Tibetan gave us, um, well, actually it's being credited to Alice Bailey. Human planning today is one of the first indications of the emergence of the will aspect. So at this time of division and risk, what does the quality of planning tell us about the emerging will? The will aspect refers to the understanding common to most spiritual traditions that life contains within itself a purposeful, universal presence, 
which can be understood as a stream of direction driving the great cyclic transformations recorded by historians. And there can be a response to it that is either positively or negatively reinforced as we deal with polarities. Positively is the energy of the soul. The negatively part is the energy of the personality as that in Virgo, that Christ consciousness that is given birth in the heart, the first initiation of humanity, where that soul takes a front leadership purposeful direction. As I say that it does in us, because we are here seeking that will to good. And we can see it being worked out as humanity works with these ideas and begins to plan and design, which are being constantly adapted and refined and eventually lead to a new order. It is a synthesis which is driving evolutionary processes for the past 70 years influencing thought and conditioning world affairs. Global planning, including the summit, the summit reflects that impulse. It also reflects the need to respond to the growing intensity of problems caused by divisions between nations and excessive materialism. It reflects both the old and new thinking. And with the sum, it shows progress in that the spirit of synthesis and well being thrive in the new environments is also present in this summit of the future through the UN and the planning groups of many groups. So much so is it noted that we can evidence that what was once termed stakeholders, UN is now using the word major groups that have organized themselves into cluster-like energies around the planet to help. It's called a unitive cluster for a pact for the future. We can see the will aspect playing itself out and the synthesis of this beautiful sign of Virgo that we know is planted within ourselves. We can say, I am the mother and the son. I God, I matter am. That is now the divine aspect of us working that divine aspect of God through us and out into the world. And that comes through service. Service is an embodiment of Virgo. Service and endeavor to love the sons of men that haven't yet touched that soul Christed presence that is working itself out in evolution. That divine aspect is being developed through us and will be transmitted through our ideas as we release into our meditation the things that we're bringing forward to discuss how best to stream into the hearts and minds of humanity. I'm so grateful to be within and a part of the purpose of this group, the will to good, for the common good. Blessings to all.
I can't help but think that our topic, it just kind of came to me. You know, it's kind of maybe silly a little bit, but what words came to me when I read our topic for this cycle, the will to good, creating balance through right action. And immediately what what was said in my head was the old Christian saying, or not old Christian saying, but more modern Christian saying, the what would Jesus do? The WWJD that people used to wear on those little plastic bracelets. And uh, and that's basically it. Um, because when you're willing something, you're focusing on it, which means you're bringing your mental attention to it. Um, and uh, creating a balance through right action, basically, when they used to say, what would Jesus do? That's basically what they're saying, because he was always... He is the Christ child, the Christ, um, you know, the the example of what we are trying to become or achieve. So I just thought that was kind of kind of cute that it that came to my mind. Thank you. I agree, Tracy. I think what's been on my mind for the last couple of minutes is just listening to Darcy and you just um, standing individually and together in our soul light as much as possible and radiating, um, especially when we're around people maybe with strong personalities that haven't been touched yet by their souls and just being, being what we believe um, is right, being just to the best of our ability, being living souls and radiating. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you. And and actually, there's one more thing I'd like to share um, with everyone, and then I'll be done here. Um, it, this comes from the Law of One, Ra, Book One, page 87. And it says here, in quotes, the discipline involves first identifying both those things of, of which you approve and disapprove, and then balance each and every positive and negative charge with its equal. And this is completeness. The subtle work is in understanding the self-polarities or other self-polarities, and then accepting the other self-polarities, which simply mirror the self. I just thought that kind of said it with, uh, I think, in Jill's meditation, she was talking about that balance. So thank you. Thank you, friends. Let us continue holding the focus and reflecting on the questions that's been offered to our group chairs today. And we will have opportunity to meet uh, for our quarter moon meeting next Tuesday, September 24th at our regular time, uh, 6 p.m. GMT, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, so please take note of that and uh, the will to good, creating balance through right action. Let us continue. And as always, I want to invite if anyone would like to sound a mantra of your choice to close our work today. I have a couple of words. It's not a mantra, but life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Thank you.